In this episode of Marie TV, we do have some adult language. So if you have little ones around, grab your headphones now. Hey there, it's Marie Forleo, and you are watching Marie TV, the place to be to create a business and life you love. Now, if you've ever wondered how you can take all your passions and your gifts and your skills and create a thriving and world-changing career, you are going to love today's guest. Francesca Ramsey is an actress, comedian, and video blogger with over 29 million views on YouTube and over half a million followers across Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Her videos have been featured on MTV, The New York Times, and the BBC. In 2012, Shit White Girls Say to Black Girls was viewed five million times in five days, garnering coverage on MSNBC, ABC, and Anderson Cooper. Most recently, Francesca worked as a writer and contributor for The Nightly Show with Larry Wilmore on Comedy Central and is the host of the MTV web series Decoded. Francesca! Yay! So damn happy to have you here. I'm so excited. I've been such a fan of yours for such a long time. Ah, that makes me thrilled. Okay. okay. Back in the, the the brick wall days. See, this is... Old school. Old school. And I, we can even go like further back than the brick wall. My ass was jumping around on my couch. Oh, I remember this. Like being so silly. Yeah. We still do it. Now we just do it like green screen and other stuff. Oh, yay. So, um, you know... You are brilliant in so many ways, and we have so many good things to talk about, but I want to take it back to what inspired you. I know you were blogging in middle school, and then you got on YouTube. What was the impulse to start creating, to start sharing, to start putting stuff out online? Um, I am very much an only child, and so I think when you don't have siblings, um, you need to find ways to entertain yourself, and the computer was really that for me. And I always wanted to be an actor. I was always interested in the arts and and media. And so the internet was really a great place for me to combine my interest in technology and also creating content and media. Um, And as someone that was just struggling to get acting work, YouTube was a really great place for me for that reason. So your initial idea was actor. Yeah, actor and also like beauty. So when I started, um, I've had locks for 14 years and it's really exciting because now like the natural hair space is so, you know, vibrant and there's so many places that you can find things, stores you can buy products for natural hair. But when I started there, they just did not exist. And so I was looking for help with my hair and I couldn't find it. So I started making videos about my hair, Um, but they were funny because that's like my personality. (laughs) Um, And so I started expanding into more characters and sketch and, and really just making things that I felt needed to be in the world. Was it ever like when you were thinking about comedy, like did you have training in that or was that just your natural personality? Um, I went to school for acting. I went to a performing arts middle and high school and then I went to University of Michigan for acting. Mm. Um, And then I transferred schools and studied graphic design. But then I did stand up for about four years before I got really serious about YouTube. Um, I like to go to bed early. (laughs) And so stand up shows always start super late. I was like, do you guys have anything at like three o'clock or like mornings? And they don't. So I was like, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm going to just stick to YouTube because I can make my own schedule um, and meet people and also make a little bit of money, which um, I really enjoyed. Yeah. And one of the things that I love about you, you know, so many people in our community, I consider them, they consider themselves multi-passionate entrepreneurs. They do a bunch of things. And I love, first of all, your website is gorgeous. Thank you. Done by our mutual friend, Crystal. Yes. She's so talented. She's so damn good. Yeah. Um, But I loved, it was like actress, comedian, or actor, comedian, blogger, graphic designer, like all Mm -hmm. the slashes. And I was like, yes, yes, yes. And it's funny because there, when I was growing up and when I was in school and I was interested in all these different things. I would constantly run into people in my family and at school who would say, you have to pick one. And I thought, well, I don't want to pick one. I like all of these things. And I very much think that if you have lots of different interests, you should explore them to the best of your ability because you never know how they're going to interplay or um, which one is going to really take off. And for me, like my graphic design stuff helped me have a great website and make sure that I had beautiful business cards and helped me edit my videos, Um, my interest in beauty and hair, you know, make sure I look cute when I go on auditions. Like all of those things really work together for me. Yeah. And then it seems like they all, in my life too, they converge at some point. Yes. 
in the beginning, it can almost feel like you're scattered. At least that's how I felt. All these different things that I wanted to do. But if you have that sense of courage and the willingness, like, I'm just going to keep going for it. Absolutely. And even if they don't fit together in a traditional sense, I feel like all the more reason for you to try and figure out a way to make it work because that's going to separate you from the pack. You're going to be able to differentiate yourself and create a brand that's really unique to you because someone's going to say, huh, I never thought of fashion and fitness fitting together, but maybe there's a way that you can, you know, do that that no one else is doing. Yes. So speaking of multi-passionate, because um, I know what's a struggle for a lot of folks that are watching, when they do have multiple interests, if things do start to take off, have you ever had a point, whether it's in, you know, past 10 years or even more recently, where the multiple passions are almost fighting with each other, where you're starting to get stuff, maybe it's rolling in the beauty sense, or maybe it's more people want you to speak on tech, or you're like, oh my goodness, but I have these projects that I want to do and start pitching shows. How have you been able to navigate some of that? I am someone who lives by my calendar. So I, I love making sure that I schedule everything, whether it's I'm going to be on Marie TV or I've got an audition or even when it's just like getting coffee with a friend or doing a phone call, catch up with someone that I went to high school with. I put it all on my calendar. Um, and so I really try to stick to that, but also keep myself a personal day. So I really try to keep Friday as my day that I don't take auditions, I don't take meetings, and I really stick to that. So um, that's my day to kind of explore maybe some things that I didn't get to do during the week or work on some more personal projects. Um, and, you know, my team knows that if it's on the calendar, that's a time that is blocked off and they can't have that time. So I think that you kind of have to set those boundaries for yourself. Yeah. And, you know, you and I share a few things. One, we're both Sag sisters. Mm, I yes, didn't know that. Yes. Fire sign. And also the Friday thing. I actually, Fridays, I try. I don't have as strict boundaries as you do, but Fridays, uh, my team knows in the calendar, like, oh, that's Marie's kind of I off mean, day. I mean, if something happens and, yes. you, and, I, and I need it to be... You know, on a Friday, sure. it's it's fine, but I really try to keep that day for myself, and you need it. And I, I learned that actually from someone that I worked with years ago, and she used to do that uh, at like six o'clock. She would have an email responder that would say, "I don't answer emails after six o'clock." I don't do that. I wish I did, but for me, I turned it into a Friday thing. Yeah. So setting those boundaries. I think is really important so that you can explore the, your passion projects if you're not doing them elsewhere within your career. Yeah. So you mentioned in an interview that you were part of YouTube's Next Up program and that you learned a lot from other content creators, especially when you were first starting to come up. And one of the things I believe that's in your heart now is you want to be able to pass along some of those lessons because you've learned so much. I mean, you're out there in such a big way. For anyone watching who feels like they have something to say, but they're not quite sure how to say it right or how to do it right, what are some of the lessons you would pass on now? I think one of the biggest things that I learned was just doing your research. I think a lot of times people say, well, I want to do this thing, but I'm not really sure how. I always say, go look at somebody whose career you really admire, somebody that's doing what you would like to see yourself doing. Maybe not exactly, but there's some element of it that you kind of feel drawn to. Um, and go look at their very first videos, go listen to some podcast interviews, um, go comb through their website. You know, that's the cool thing about social media is you can really learn a lot about someone and their career trajectory and some of the things that they've done. Um, and really, I love to write lists and notebooks and things. So so really make yourself a list of all the things that they've done that you can learn from, things that they've done right and things that they've done wrong, um, and really kind of help use that as a roadmap for whatever it is that you're working on. And I also think that's just so important because oftentimes you might have a really great idea and then realize, oh crap, somebody's already doing that. Mm. Or someone did that and it failed. Why did it fail? Or what am I doing that's possibly going to lead me down the path where this will not be successful? So I think that research step is really important. Um, and then I also just think working with other people, you know, you can just learn so much from other people and you can also kind of help lift each other up. Maybe there's a skill that they have that you don't have that you can um, partner on a project together. And also just you never know who they're going to meet that you will be perfect for a project or you might meet someone and vice versa. Um, I'm so lucky. I met so many people through Next Step who I'm still really good friends with today and have gotten to work with in a variety of different ways. That's so cool. You know, um, one of the things we were talking about off camera, we were just getting ready, was 
this idea of comparison. You were sharing a Marie TV video. Yes. Let's talk about that. One of your favorite ones from early on. Yeah, I it really spoke to me just talking about the downside of comparing yourself to other people and how especially for entrepreneurs, it's hard not to do that because yeah. there's so much time where things aren't working out and you're you're taking this risk and you've got people around you telling you like, oh, is this a good idea? You're, you know, putting money into something that doesn't necessarily see an end goal in sight. Um, and then you see somebody appear, you know, that's doing what you want to do and they're being really successful and it's just hard. Um, and that really spoke to me because you know, in any creative field, there's going to be times it's just not working yet. Yeah. Um, and so I really kind of built on that and I've started saying, stop hating, start studying. I love because it. Because I've had so many times where I'm like, mm, she ain't all that. And I was like, wait a second, she is all that. <laughs> She's doing so well. And then I then instead of like getting upset and you know like going down that Facebook K-hole and looking at all their pictures and seeing all the stuff that they're doing, I started thinking, well, let me study this person and see how is it that she booked that job? How is it that she got that client? And I think that once I started doing that, it's helped me so, so much. Um, and I think that more of us need to put that into practice, especially because social media makes it so easy to just hate and consume everything that's going on in someone else's life. Yeah. And, you know, we were also talking, too, about how so much of what's on social media is just kind of bullshit because oh, yeah. it's it's a lot of fakeness. Yeah, exactly. That's a jefe filter. I know it. <laughs> and I see it. Nobody looks that good all the time. Uh, so much of it's not real, right? Like, yeah. think about how many selfies you have to take before you get that perfect oh, selfie. Oh, my. I, I am the queen of having my eyes closed. Exactly. The queen. Right. So you have to take a ton of pictures Ugh. or you have to, like, jump to get that one flawless <laughs> jump picture. And you've got all the ones where you're, like, on the ground, <laughs> you know, and you're, like, skirts up. Um, I think that we look at what's happening on social media and we think, wow, that person's life is perfect. But we don't know about, oh, a perfect example. I remember I had bed bugs in my apartment. And I've had I, them too. I, you're in New York, right? Yes. Right? And I still had to make videos. Yeah. And so I had like one area of my apartment that was clean and the rest of my apartment was like garbage bags. And I was like, <laughs> hey guys, blah, blah, blah. And then like the camera would go off and I was like, I hate my life. I was like, this sucks. I'm like climbing over bags. No one knew. I wasn't yes. telling them that, you know? But my audience is watching thinking like, wow, her apartment's so cute. And like, she's like, like put together. Life's she's so, so great. funny. And I was like, no, I'm literally sitting here being like, uh, uh, you're like, this sucks. Yeah. And you don't realize like what's happening outside of that frame. Yes. Right. And so I think the minute that you start comparing yourself to somebody else, it's a lose lose no matter no matter what, because you don't actually know the whole story. And what you're seeing has been tweaked and edited to present an illusion. Yes. Yes, amen. And we were all sorry. Like, I don't spend that much time on social. Like oh, people, I wish I didn't. Yeah, and I know we're, we we do similar things, but you know, everyone's got their own path. But for me, I just have so much fun putting the damn phone down. Like I, I get so many more things done. I know it's true. It's for me. It's like a double edged sword because yeah. it is work and play. And you get to connect with people. Absolutely. And there's that beautiful upside, which I do really love. And then there is. It's like it's really about. I think for me bringing a level of consciousness mm -hmm. and awareness to it. Yeah, that was one of my New Year's resolutions was to try and live in the moment more. Yeah. I realized I was thinking a little bit too much about capturing things for social media rather yeah. than just actually enjoying them. Yes. Because you're never going to watch concert snaps. You're just not. Yeah. No, that's, that's my thing. Like, I have to dial down the jersey when mm -hmm. I go to concerts. <laughs> like, I really – I'm like, okay – because the, the, I'm the person who will want to start maybe yelling, like, put the damn phone, put your phones down. Like, please put your goddamn phones down. I just want to see Beyonce. And I am so the person that's, like, on Snapchat that's like, I'm getting my life. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's bad. I apologize in no. advance. I'm getting better. It's it's fun stuff, though. I love that we're having this conversation. So um, – one of the things that I – I mean, I admire so many things about you. You're so brilliant at Thank what you, you do. But I love that your work, from your perspective, from what you shared, it's solution-based. Talk to me about your perspective on creating content around women's issues and social justice and things that can be – they're tricky paths to walk. And really what I feel when I watch your work is this sense of wanting to help us understand each other better. Yeah, absolutely. I mean – I saw this quote that said, you don't know what you don't know, yeah. you know? And so for me, I talk about these issues in a way that I hope will be 
um, easily digestible because yeah. it's hard to talk about social justice. It, it makes people feel uncomfortable, people feel guilty. Um, and I found that comedy is a great way to kind of break that barrier down and make people feel a little bit more comfortable. I also love talking about pop culture and using myself as an example. I also find that you know, oftentimes when we talk about things like privilege, for example, if I can talk about my own privilege as like a straight, cis, able-bodied woman, then people realize like, oh wait, you're not yelling at me. This is not, I didn't do anything bad. Like, we all have to kind of deal with this to make a better world for people. Yeah. So I really think if more people were open to acknowledging like their own position in life and also like the mistakes that they've made. So many times when we talk about social issues, very, uh, it makes sense that people get upset, and I think that people are entitled to those feelings, especially when we're talking about life and death issues. Yeah. But I think if more people were open to say, look, I've screwed up in the past, or I didn't know about this issue at one time, more people would be open to doing that themselves. So that's really what I try to do in my work. You do it so well. Thank and you. And like, in especially, you know, the amount of wisdom accurate information, humor, and warmth that you are able to convey in like the MTV Decoded. Thank it's like you. these five, it's brilliant. Thanks, but you know, it, the similarly to how, you know, you've been on YouTube for a long time, it's a process, right? Yeah. Like you look at your old videos and you think, oh my goodness, yeah. why did I do that? Like that did not work. Yeah. Um, and so I've been on YouTube for about 11 years. So I have all those old videos up largely because I want people to see that where I'm at now is not where I started. Yes. Um, and so I've learned a lot over the years and just kind of refined um, my content and the way that we approach these issues so that we really have it down to a science that I'm super proud of. You should be. And I feel like for all of us, we continue to grow because the world keeps changing. Absolutely. And it's like navigating it. And, and speaking of that, um, not everyone, and I think this is so important for people to hear, we've been online a long time. We're creating a lot of stuff. And naturally, not everyone's going to like Oh. or agree with your perspective. There is like a cottage industry <laughs> around not liking me. It's I pay people's bills. It's wild. <laughs> I, which is very, very difficult for, I can't even. That's yeah. like a whole. But you know what? It is the same way that I talked about stop hating and start studying. Yeah. I feel like people in their process, you are at a place where you maybe see somebody doing something that you wish that you were doing, or they're doing something that you feel like you could do better. Yep. And for people who don't necessarily have the confidence to put themselves out there, especially when it comes to media, that can be really hard yeah. um, to see somebody succeeding at something that you wish that you could do. And so I realized, because I've been in that place myself, to not take it as personally as I would in the past. Of yeah. course, I'm human, some days you have a bad day and, and it hurts your feelings, but I realize that it really is more about them than it is about me. Has that helped you? I know you've written about like, it's really about choosing your battles. Oh, right. <laughs> and I think that is, it's an important thing. And I remember, you know, when I first started, even doing online programs, I love education. I love getting people into an experience where I can hopefully make a positive difference to them. And I just remember like the first few times someone refunded and I just, um, mm. it's so, like it's kind of silly to hear myself say this now, but it just felt like such a punch in the gut. And I took it so seriously and I just was like, oh God, I'm a horrible person. Like what right. have I done? But I think as you, hopefully grow and as all of us mature and you get more experience, you do have to pick your battles. Oh, absolutely. And the thing is, is like everything isn't for everyone, yeah. right? Like there are some television shows that are super successful that I'm like, I do not get this show, yep. or this sucks, I don't like that movie or that artist or whatever it is, and there's an audience for that, yep. right? So if someone's not interested in my content or they ask for a refund, it's not a negative reflection on you all the time. Maybe it's just you weren't right for that person or that project didn't fit what their needs were. Um, but in terms of when it comes to responding to some of those negative comments, for me, I really try to be strategic in that it's usually less about them and more about my audience. So mm -hmm. if I can find a funny and smart way to respond to something negative that maybe can help my audience have a better way to address that question or comment from their family member or their roommate or their coworker, then for me, it's less about that troll who said something really ignorant about my work yeah. and more about you know all my Twitter followers who are also 
listening and they're saying, oh, how is she addressing this? Oh, wow, I'm going to use that. I'm going to put that in my pocket. Yep. They're watching from, Absolutely. from many different perspectives. Do you have a team of people, whether it's like friends or confidants or literal, you know, teams that help you do what you do? Because none of us do this alone. Yeah. Do you ever go out to them and say, because we do this on our team, you know, when some if someone comes in with a particular comment or they come in really upset, we'll roundtable it. You know, and say, okay, great. What's really happening? You know, is is this a troll, someone who's just pure hating, or is this someone who's hurt? And there's a lot of validity. And how can we address this in a way that is full of compassion and also honesty, sharing our perspective? Yeah, I do think it's important to take a step back because yeah. sometimes, even though someone is saying something that is hurtful and maybe it is filled with, you know, curse words and personal jabs that aren't fair, sometimes there is a grain of truth in there that you do need to hear. Yeah. Um, and for me, that person's my husband. You know, he's someone that I, he really keeps it real with me sometimes when I don't want him to. I'm like, <laughs> I really hate this girl. He's like, well, she's not wrong. And I'm like, just agree with me. He's like, <laughs> she didn't, she didn't say something wrong, you know? And I'm yeah. like, oh crap, you're right, you know? So I know that if there's something that really hits me and I think I can't shake it, I take it to him. And he, um, he really helps me think about it objectively. And again, sometimes it's not the answer I want to hear, but yep. it's the one that I need to hear. And I think it's really important to surround yourself with people like that. So uh, my manager is that type of person. My agent is that type of person. Um, I'm very weary of people who tell me I'm doing great all the time. Mm -hmm. um, while it might feel good in the moment, I realize that I don't know that I can trust them to let me know when I've gotten it wrong or like when those pants don't fit <laughs> or like, you know what I'm saying? Like yes. your thong is showing. Just tell me. Yes. Like don't tell me I look great. Just tell me that it's not right so I can change. And that's how my husband is. And that's how all the people that I work with are like that too. So I, I consider myself to be very fortunate. Yeah. Well, you help create that yeah, because you. of your, your open heart and your desire to grow and your desire to continue. It's freaking awesome. Let's talk about something that you've shared. And I think there's a lot of people in our audience who can relate to this, that, you know, you said every day there were people telling you that you're not successful and that your career's over and that you're never doing anything, but you knew in your heart that they were wrong. Let's just talk about that and also the importance for all of us to define success for ourselves. Yes. Oh my goodness. I, that is so huge. Yeah. And I think for me, that's been particular, particularly relevant for social media because so much of social media success is around numbers. And truthfully, I have never had huge numbers. Like I had a viral video in 2012. I'm so thankful it really kickstarted my career. Yeah. But since that, I don't have, you know, 200,000, 300,000 people watching all of my videos, but I know my content is good, right? And yeah. so the people that I look up to, whose careers I've seen, you know, have accomplished all sorts of things that I would like to accomplish in my career. Yeah. From Issa Rae to Abby, um, Abby Glazer and or Alana Glazer and Abby Jacobson at, at Broad City. Like these are women who had web series that didn't have huge numbers, yep. but they're on HBO and Comedy Central, they're winning awards. And so success for me is not necessarily what the number is on my videos, right? Success for me is, getting a chance to be interviewed by Marie Forleo, Aww. getting a chance to go speak at a college, you know, getting that call for a really big audition that I wouldn't have gotten that call for if they hadn't seen the video that I had made that didn't get hundreds of thousands of views, but it was a good video, right? Yes. And so for me and for anyone that I feel is kind of wrestling with where they're going in their career, I ask them to think about, well, what is it that you want? You know, and once you lay that out for yourself, I make these lists and I say, well, I want to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, and here's how I'm going to get there. No one else can tell you, like, what success is because you've decided what it is for yourself. Yes. So I've had lots of people who've said, oh, well, you don't do this and this and this. And it's like, I don't want to do any of those things. So, like... Totally okay with that. Like, yeah. that's not what my goal is. <laughs> I've done all these other things that I would like to do, you yeah. know? Um, and so it's, I get it. It's hard, you know? And for me, I, you know, I try to be the bigger person, but I'm a little petty sometimes. Who's not? And it's nice human. when those same people are suddenly like, I'm so proud of you. You're doing all this stuff. And I'm like, mm, I remember the days. <laughs> 
I remember when you said that I wasn't doing this and this, but I'm gonna let you cook, thank you. And I keep it moving. So you have to remember, you need to put that in your back pocket so that when they come around and congratulate you, cause you're gonna get there. It's just gonna take some time, you yes. know? I love, I had a couple of choice people <laughs> telling me my, it was particularly like some financial goals. They're like, oh, I don't, don't set yourself up for disappointment, Marie. They're like, I don't think you're going to be able to do that no, so fast. No, as high as you want. I really sat there. I was like, do, do you know who the hell you're talking to? You just lit a fire under my ass so big mm -hmm. because I will want to be the girl that comes back and go, oh, wait, can I show you this? <laughs> well, and what's so funny, and I'm sure you've had this too, is like now social media, and especially YouTube, yeah. has like a level of prestige, right? Everybody knows they gotta have a Facebook. Everyone's trying to do a web series. But 10 years ago, it was like, you make videos in your bedroom? <laughs> are your clothes on? Like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I, you know, I'm doing this thing. And like every person I would talk to was like, that's really weird, yes. you know? I was like, I'm gonna go home and edit my YouTube videos. And they were like, why? And now everyone's like, can you help me start a YouTube channel? And so you have to realize that where you're at right now is not where you're gonna be five or 10 years from now. And so you have to look at that goal and stay focused on it because there's gonna be a lot of people who right now don't know what that five or 10 year goal is and they don't get it. Yeah. And that's totally okay. Five years from now, they're all gonna be like, gosh, I wish I had gotten on that thing that you had gotten on because you knew where you were headed and, and why you were working towards that thing. You have a really strong sense of intuition, don't you? I don't know that it's intuition. I just feel I'm just really driven. And I think that I'm really fortunate because my parents have really instilled that in me. Mm. They were, you know, they were always very um, supportive of whatever it was that I was doing. And they would just say, listen, whatever it is that you're doing, just work as hard as possible and just be the best that you can at it. And so that's what I've always tried to do. And you know, sometimes it doesn't work out, but yeah. um, I'm very much of the mind that things happen the way that they're supposed to. And over the course of my career, I can look back on things that didn't work out and I realize mm, I was not ready for that thing or that was a terrible thing and I'm so glad that it didn't happen. Yeah. And that's happened enough that now I just kind of trust it as I go along. If I don't book the gig, if something falls through, then maybe it wasn't meant to be and something else is gonna come up. Awesome. So we gotta end with like the most Exciting, incredible. <laughs> Can we just talk for a minute about yeah. your new pilot with Comedy Central? You are executive producing and co hosting. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh, oh. I, I can't even. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, I'm freaking excited. <laughs> um, it's in development right now, but can you tell us about the vision for the show, your hopes for the show, anything that you're that you're able to share? Yeah, I mean, for me, I'm just really excited to have a chance to kind of explore some issues that I don't see other people talking about on television. Yeah. I think. Talking about identity and representation is so important to me. Um, and sometimes it's not as overt as actually like talking about a specific issue, but just highlighting different sorts of voices. Um, and I found in my work that I get people who say things like, wow, I never saw somebody with locks on television before. Wow. Or, you know, I never thought about um, this issue until you brought on somebody from this community to talk about it. Or just seeing somebody that looks like me on Decoded or, you know, in one of your sketches has been really eye-opening and, and gives people a lot of... Um, just like hope and faith in themselves. And that's really what I want to do, but in a comedic way. Yeah. So um, I'm just excited that I'm going to get an opportunity to do it on a larger scale. To think that I started in my bathroom making hair videos, <laughs> you know, to then go to MTV. And then I was on the nightly show at Comedy Central. Yeah. And, and now to have the chance to have my own show and really kind of use all the things that I've learned to kind of take this next step and create things that I never could have done on my own is yeah. is really exciting. I can't wait to see your show. Thank you. Like, it's just, it's incredible. And I don't know, are you able to talk about the book or are we going to leave that aside? Yeah, yeah. I, can, I can, I can give a little, a little yeah, bit. drop us a little hint so we can get excited yeah, for that too. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited because, you know, we talked about how YouTube is in these like little cute five minute confines and then you know I love Twitter but you can only say so much in 140 characters yeah. and there have been so many times I wanted to really deep dive on a topic or just a personal story from my life um, and I haven't been able to do that and so I've kind of been stockpiling them away and I just started working on this book and it's a lot of personal stories but also a lot of advice just about the digital space being an activist 
a lot of the mistakes that I've made, because I really think that that's something um, more people should be transparent about, especially yes. in activist spaces. And so I'm excited. I'm I'm really trying to get people thinking, but also get people laughing and being honest about their own personal journeys and where they want to go. Um, and I'm just so fortunate that I'm getting an opportunity to do that and that anyone cares what I think. Well, so. you're extremely talented and you work your buns off. Thank you. Thank so you. it's not, I, you're fortunate, yes, 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 but you deserve it. Thank you, you so really, much. really do. I Prince, appreciate that. Thank you for taking the time to be here. All of us, myself Aww. and the whole audience, we are going to be cheering you on. Thank you. And hopefully you can come back on and we'll be able to talk about even more. Yeah, I'm, I cannot say thank you enough. This has been so surreal because I've just been such a fan for so long. And oh. you helped me in my career. So it's kind of come full circle, which is really cool. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Francesca and I would love to hear from you. So why don't you tell us, has there been an idea you've been harboring in your heart or something that you want to create or express, but perhaps you've been afraid to do it? If you've got something that you want to put out into the world, tell us about it in the comments below. Now, as always, the best conversations happen over at the magical land of marieforleo.com. So go there and leave a comment now. And when you're over there, be sure to subscribe to our email list and become an MF Insider. You'll get instant access to an audio I created called How to Get Anything You Want, and you'll get exclusive content, some special giveaways, and personal updates from me that you just can't get anywhere else. Stay on your game and keep going for your dreams because the world needs that very special gift that only you have. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll catch you next time on Marie TV. B School is coming up. Want in? For more info and free training, go to joinbschool.com. And so I had like one area of my apartment that was clean, and the rest of my apartment was like garbage bags. And I was like, hey guys! And then like the camera would go off, and I was like, I hate my life! I was like, this sucks. I'm like climbing over bags. No one knew. I wasn't telling them that, you know?